Do you want to know why the intro hasn't started? It's because there's a dirty big blowfly ruining my shot. That's better. So in this video, I'm going to be taking a close look at this right here. It is the X-Tool D1 laser cutter and engraver. You can buy this in two different flavors, either a 5 or a 10 watt uh, laser diode option. I have the 10 watt version right here. And in this video, I'm going to show you basic assembly setup, uh, some software, and then I'm going to demonstrate cutting and engraving various materials. Now, full disclosure, Xtool sent this product to me for review. However, they haven't given me any money for this video, and they certainly haven't told me anything to say. My opinion is my own, and I'll try and be as unbiased as humanly possible. And ultimately, at the end of this video, I want to share my thoughts on this and tell you whether I think it's worth spending your hard-earned money on. So, let's get into the video. The build quality of the D1, simply put, is exquisite. The entire chassis is constructed from custom extruded anodized aluminium. This not only looks and feels like a premium product, but also provides an extremely rigid chassis. The 10 watt laser version I have here utilizes two 5 watt diodes focused down to a pinpoint 80 by 80 microns, making this a very capable diode laser cutter for materials such as wood, plastic, leather, foam and so on. It's also possible to engrave on coated or anodized metal which you'll see later in the video. The modular extension feet allow for easy and precise height adjustment of the machine to accommodate items up to 140mm in height or 110mm when using the rotary engraver. The flip down height guide makes it so simple to focus the laser head on the workpiece. There is also a low power red crosshair laser that is super useful for lining up the home position on your workpiece prior to cutting or engraving. The software that Xtool provides is extremely easy and intuitive to use. In summary, if you're looking for a premium 5 or 10 watt laser engraver cutter that is easy to assemble and operate, comes with nifty features to make your DIY jobs easier and faster, then I highly recommend the D1 by Xtool. Here we have the rare and elusive mechatronic Neanderthal. To attract a mate, this young single male must construct a functioning circuit. Unfortunately for this young male, he isn't using a custom printed circuit board, so there is only one way this can end. Oh dear. Thankfully this won't happen to you, because you can order a custom printed circuit board from JLCPCB. Starting from as little as $2 for 5 PCBs, they have fast production time and offer a wide range of design options and colours to choose from. So why don't you try out JLC PCB for your next project. Let's get into unboxing. Inside you'll find a card directing you to Xtool's website for assembly instructions. On their website Xtool provides written instructions and assembly videos. The laser cutter comes extremely well packaged with plenty of foam, so unless your mailman is the Hulk, it shouldn't get damaged during transit. Next I found a bag of hardware and some material samples. A USB cord laser safety glasses, a power adapter. Taking a closer look at one of the chassis rails, the D1 feels built different, and I mean that in a good way. The entire chassis is made from beautiful anodized alloy extrusions. This feels and looks like a premium product. I've unboxed 3D printers, CNC mills and countless tools, 
and yet this feels special. Anyway, enough rambling about the quality. Next is the laser head. This version has an optical power output of 10 watts. After removing the remaining chassis rails, the last thing to unbox is the plug and play wiring loom. The rails come partially assembled making assembly dead simple. Simply align the rails together and secure them using the included hardware. The longer screws are used to tension the timing belts. Next, the x-axis rail can be mounted to the y-axis carriage plates. The machine is then flipped so the y-axis drive axle can be installed. Next, the wiring loom was connected to the PCB headers. The wiring loom has several points you can install zip ties along for a tidy install. After connecting the x-axis motor to the loom, more cable ties are used to secure the cable along the x-axis rail. Lastly, the laser is connected and the wiring slipped into the strain relief slot. And with the SD card installed onto the PCB, that completes assembly. An optional extra you can purchase is a rotary roller attachment that is used for engraving cylindrical objects. The spacing between the rollers can be quickly adjusted by removing a single screw. Then slide the opposite end to one of the three locations. Simply reinstall the screw and you're done. When using the rotary engraver attachment, it may be necessary to raise the chassis for the laser to have sufficient clearance. Fortunately, this is made easy by adding foot extensions. Simply remove the rubber pad, screw in as many extensions as required, then replace the rubber pad. Connect the rotary roller to the PCB using the included cable, then align the roller collinear to the x-axis rail. Now let's fire up the laser by connecting the USB cable and power adapter. When you turn the power on, the crosshair laser guide and laser heatsink fan will turn on. I downloaded and installed Xtools LaserBox Basic software from their website. Once inside the application, first I selected my D1 laser from the drop down menu. Besides USB, you can also connect the D1 via Wi Fi and even use your phone or tablet for engraving or cutting. For the purposes of this video, I'll just be using my laptop and a USB cable. With that done, now I can import a PNG image to engrave onto wood. I'll left click to select the image, then on the right hand side there are a few settings we can change. Here we can adjust the size of the image to be engraved, we can also rotate, mirror or flip the image if required. Now at the top we have a few material options to choose from.
Further down we can tweak the laser power and millimetres per second speed. Further down we can specify how many passes the laser will make. Now that I'm happy with my settings I'll click the play button which will open up this window. At this point your material should be aligned at your intended start position by using the crosshairs. Before I start engraving I'll click the framing button which will move the laser around the perimeter of my engraving to make sure the image fits my workpiece. With everything looking good I'll start engraving. This was my first time engraving using this machine. The settings I used were very conservative, so this one took longer than it needed to. Later I bumped up the speed to 180mm a second with 100% power, which dramatically sped up the engraving time on wood. The engraving turned out very nice. Now I wanted to try cutting through some plywood. Once again I imported the same image. After selecting the image I clicked on outline, which as the name suggests creates an outline of the original image. I then deleted the original image since it's no longer needed. Selecting the outline you'll notice we have a new tab called cut which is obviously used for cutting out objects. After tweaking the settings, I let the laser cutter make two passes, which would hopefully cut all the way through the 6mm oak plywood. Oak plywood is pretty tough, so it should be a good test for the laser. On the back side, the plywood had a couple of fragments of wood clinging on for dear life, so I probably should have done one more pass to cut all the way through. Still, it was easy enough to pop out the cat. Next I wanted to push the machine all the way to 11 by setting the speed to its maximum 180mm a second to engrave a plane onto the plywood. Turning the speed up to its maximum didn't degrade the quality of the image at all and the plane turned out great. I also wanted to try cutting 6mm thick black acrylic plastic. At 100% power the speed was set to 5mm a second and a total of 6 passes were made. The laser had no problem cutting all the way through. and it's safe to say the laser had no problem engraving on leather. Next I wanted to attempt engraving on stainless steel. I created some text and selected the default stainless steel engraving profile.
After engraving, I couldn't see any marks left on the blade. Since there are many different grades of stainless steel, I wondered if the fault was with the knife rather than the machine. So I used the included stainless steel dog tag that came included with the laser. I set up some text to engrave and left the machine engraving. Unfortunately the result was the same. Xtool sent me a photo of someone who had successfully engraved on stainless using the D1. With that in mind, I figured the default stainless steel engraving profile settings might need tweaking. I lowered the speed down to 4mm a second and attempted to engrave on the knife once again. This time we have a much better result. The engraving could have done with at least one more pass to achieve greater contrast, but at least we have a result this time. If you only plan on occasionally engraving on stainless steel, then I can see this being viable. However, if you intended to regularly engrave on stainless, then the slow speed might be a deal breaker. On the subject of engraving metal, I think it's time to do one last job by using the rotary engraver. I lifted the chassis by adding the extensions and placed a piece of painted alloy tube on the rotary roller and started engraving. The text turned out excellent and was crisp and sharp. Nice. Going back a couple of months ago, you may have seen me review this right here. It's the Autua LaserMaster 2 Pro. You might be wondering how these two machines stack up. Well, let me point out that this isn't a level playing field exactly. This is a 10 watt laser, this is a 5 watt laser. But hypothetically, if we pretend that I have the 5 watt version of this machine, because keep in mind the rest of the chassis doesn't change, just the laser power output, then at least on paper, these two machines aren't too dissimilar to one another. So how do they stack up? Well, the Autoa is slightly cheaper, and that's a good thing. However, what are you getting for your extra money if you bought the D1? Well, the thing you cannot get away from on the D1 is the build quality. It's just next level. All custom alloy extrusions, the way that all the chassis fits together, basically the whole thing is constructed of metal. Heck, even the wheels on the laser carriage are steel. It's just fantastic. I absolutely love the build quality of this thing. The chassis is so rigid, I wouldn't be surprised if technically someone could get away with putting on a CNC rotary tool uh, to do some light machining or engraving. Not that I'd encourage that, but hopefully that drives the point home of just how solid and rigid this chassis is. Now if you're thinking about purchasing a D1, then now has never been a better time because right now they are having a Black Friday sale. You can pick up the 5 watt or the 10 watt version of the D1 at a heavily discounted price. If you want to check that out, there'll be an affiliate link down in my video's description. And if you use that, I get a small kickback at no cost to you, and it helps keep my channel afloat. So if you use that, that would be much appreciated. Awesome, that about wraps it up for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to smash that like button. Subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. Thanks to my Patreon supporters, and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.